by six, um, one and a half inch canvas, and I'm gonna paint an acorn. So I already sketched it and then traced it out on some tracing paper. So I'm gonna show you how, once I do that, I know it seems a ridiculous process when I could probably just sketch it on my canvas, but you can see I, I tried that already and I hated it and I was erasing and sketching and erasing. And then I thought, you know, this is ridiculous. Just do on your plastic. So um, I'm trying to find something while I talk. That's why I sound crazy. Where is my tracing paper? All right, I've lost it. So I'm gonna grab this one. This one's yellow. Hopefully it'll show up. So anyway, I went ahead and put it on this tracing paper. Yes, so I'm hoping that this one will turn out nicely and then I can do the other one without fear. Because sometimes when I'm painting something new, I get myself like in a tizzy and you know, I can paint some dogs now, don't get me wrong. I have painted some dogs, don't think I have it. But uh, we're gonna try to avoid that. So I've traced my design onto my paper and I am going to transfer it from my paper onto my canvas. I make my own self laugh sometimes, Kim. I, it's like, girl, you need to get a grip. Oh, I found it and this is gonna be better because it's black. Yes, I, I, I'm just like a hot mess over here. Hot mess. So I'm just gonna stick, okay, I gotta turn my fan off. My menopause fans blowing my paper. So I'm gonna just stick, actually I wanna figure out exactly where I want it. Then I'm just gonna slide my transfer paper, or whatever this is, graphite paper, whatever it's called, underneath. And I'm gonna trace over my little sketch so that it looks nice. Cause I already tried to draw it freehand on this canvas and it was a disaster. So I am just going to do it the right way because it goes this way. <laughs> I'm trying to think, did I do it this way? Sorry guys, I'm crazy, obviously. I want it, can't decide how I want it. I think I want it like this, okay. So, I know, sorry, the mind of an artist. We crazy, we can't help it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just trace over just a little bit of a scribble around where the top of that acorn is. We are going to add glass there. So I just wanna get the basic shape down. And you would think an acorn wouldn't be hard to draw but when you're under pressure, sometimes it's like, uh, yeah, crazy girl. Yeah, I hadn't had a day off. I hadn't had a day off in a long time. You know, when you're single and you're running your own household and running your own business, you don't really get a lot of time off, and that's okay too. I love painting. I love my art page. I love doing this, so that makes it all better. Yeah, this is called tracing paper. That's the clear stuff that I sketch on. And you can use notebook paper or typing paper or whatever. And this is called graphite paper, transfer paper. Um, you know, it's you can get like this yellow piece is like from the sewing department at Walmart. But it's the same thing. It has that wax coating on one side that transfers color to your canvas. So now we have our cute little um, acorn on our thing. So yeah, I am a little punchy. So forgive me if I am uh, talking crazy. I've been on go for about three weeks. All right, so I brought so many colors to my paint table because I don't 100% know what I'm gonna do here. Thank you, Gail. Some people think I'm crazy. I probably am a little bit. I think most artists are a little, most everybody is a little bit crazy, right? Especially these days, it's 2020 crazy. 
Okay, so I don't 100% know what I'm doing, so but I'm just going to try, okay? So I'm gonna start with a basic um, brown, acorny color, and uh, it's rusted pipe. I'm gonna put a little on this palette, and I'm just gonna fill in the bottom of my acorn with this paint. So I'm gonna dampen my brush, and I'm just using, I just grabbed a brush. There's no rhyme and reason for this brush. It's just one. I actually left a whole slew of them downstairs at the sink that I cleaned because I'm terrible about leaving them up here for like a week and then they're all my brushes are dirty and I left them all downstairs. So that is the only reason I'm using this one is because it was handy. It was sitting there saying, use me. Use me and abuse me. So I'm just gonna fill in the bottom of this acorn with color, and then we'll work from there. I want it to be a little colorful. I saw a cute little acorn on Pinterest. That is my inspiration for this. So I hope it turns out nicely. This color's terrible. It looks like baby poo. But we're gonna go with it. <laughs> we're going with it. So this is gonna be fun and interesting, and if it looks like, if it turns out to look like baby poo in the end, I hope y'all will just laugh with me and not at me. <laughs> so we'll just see how it goes. Sometimes you just gotta paint when you don't even know what you're doing. So we're gonna just fill this in. Can y'all see that good? Yeah, yeah. So last night we finished up, like I said, we finished up the Sunflower Challenge and it was so much fun. It was so crazy how many people joined us for the challenge. It was like the craziest thing ever, like 1,700 people joined. Now, granted, all those people weren't on the live at the same time because a lot of people joined and will do it at their own pace because that's what we offer. There, all the videos were recorded so that, uh, you know, you didn't have to really play with us. You could just do it whenever you wanted. But um, there were so many, we had like an average of like 500 people on our lives. And, you know, some of my little artist friends, that's nothing. They have 500 people all the time, but that's not typical for me. <laughs> I usually don't have, yeah, it's kind of uh, like milk chocolatey, but not quite. It's like too much milk in the chocolate. Um, I normally don't have that many people in my life, so it kind of freaked me out a little bit. And, uh, but it, we, it worked out. Everybody was awesome. Yay, Lisa, I can't wait to see your red sunflower. Everybody was awesome and everybody worked uh, well together and it was just so much fun. And there were people, I'm gonna go ahead and just base coat the top of it in with this camel, which is what is on my background. I forgot to tell you that. Just white and camel on the background. I, I based it in white. Then I just smushed in a little bit of camel and then that is just gray. Um, so I already had that on my palette, so I'm just going to start with that color on the tip top, the little uh, bumpy part of the, I need some more water on my brush, the little bumpy part of the acorn. I keep wanting to call it a pine cone for some reason. Maybe it's because I'm a little crazy today. So anyway, their challenge went swimmingly. I was so nervous about that many people wondering if I could do it, but it was so much fun and I was so happy and pleased with the progress people made. People who had never painted or used plaster before were knocking it out of the park, making the prettiest sunflowers you've ever seen. And it was so stinking awesome. So we opened last night our doors to the Sunflower Challenge people for anybody who wanted to join the Shattered Circle. So I'm just gonna make a few little bumps here too so it's not a straight line. Just make it a little bumpy. I'm just kind of going back and forth between the darker color and the lighter color. I don't even know what they are now. Rusted pipe and something. 
camel. Anyway, um, we uh, got a bunch of people. It was so exciting how um, excited these people were to join our Shattered Circle group. They were so ready and so happy to join. It was like we woke up, or they woke up, really, their creative spirit that maybe they'd been like tamping down for a long time and uh, really enjoy the process of painting something because let me just tell you, it does take you away. You know, I've had a hard year. It has not been a great year for me going through um, a divorce, which is really not final, so it's not really a divorce yet, but um, moving away back home, move, you know, moving by myself, starting over, getting a divorce, and then the COVID, and oh my goodness, it's been crazy pants for me. But the one saving grace I always have is coming up here to this room and making art, or going into the Shattered Circle where all my girl folk and Richard is, <laughs> and um, hanging out with my creative circle and uh, just having a peaceful time because coming up here and I'm going to go ahead and base coat that in um, umber while I'm just running my pie hole. So um, mm, going through the motions and coming up here, even though I have to hobble up the stairs, coming up and um, I need a different brush. Hang on. Sorry, I'm crazy. Coming up here and just kind of letting yourself go is the best feeling ever. It's like all the icky stuff that has been on your mind or that keeps you awake at night or, you know, getting away from Facebook even. Oh, my Lord, Facebook is like a poison right now. You know, it felt so good just to come up here. And even if you just sat, just sitting up here makes me feel better. But coming up here and just painting something, even if it doesn't turn out the way I want it to, which happens sometimes <laughs> too, uh, is such a blessing. It is so, it just, it makes everything okay. So just being able to take that time away from everything else, away from all the things that stress us out is really awesome. So, and I want that for you guys too. Find a space, clean out the old sewing room or something. Find you a place, even if it's not painting, just find you a place to do whatever that thing is that you love to do so much. It is so awesome. Yes, exactly. It just allows you to not worry about all the things that are happening around you. Not worry about you know, just the stresses of life. So it is really nice to uh, have that space. And I have inside my Shattered Circle is a wonderful group of women who make that happen for me. Otherwise, I'd be out there, I'd probably be waiting tables somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, it's actually kind of a blue-gray down here. It kind of looks blue on the screen, but it is more blue, it's more gray, it's gray storm. Down at the bottom, I don't know why it's reflecting blue. But yes, I did white all over. Then I added camel at the top this way, vertical. And then a little gray storm horizontal for the acorn to be sitting on. So yeah, it, on my iPad, I'm looking at it on my iPad and it does look blue. But it's gray storm, which is kind of a blue gray. So that may be why. So now I think what I'm going to do is just start futzing with the bottom of the, uh, yes, Michelle, we are a family, with the bottom of my acorn. And I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna start adding color. And if it turns to a mud hole, we'll stop and let it dry and we'll do something else, okay? So um, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna add a couple of colors. I'm gonna add a little more camel because that's starting to dry up a little. And I'm gonna add some green. This is, these are all colors that were sitting on my desk from doing the pumpkin on the pedestal. So I'm just gonna use them. They're sitting here, I don't have to get up. <laughs> Richard, I swear I love you so much. <laughs> 
I love you beyond measure. Okay, so maybe a little of this heritage brick. And I'm gonna add a little more of that umber. So I don't really know how this is gonna turn out. It's kind of like my crazy pumpkin. I don't know if you guys saw me do the crazy pumpkin, but um, I just threw some color on my table and started adding color. Let's, let's do some black and white too. And uh, started painting and it actually turned out pretty good. Oh, Marlene, you're too funny. You, can, you need a distraction for five minutes. Actually, this is probably gonna be 30 minutes, so it's time for a break. Okay, so I am, I'm gonna actually start back into my, um, what is this color again? Rusted Pipe, which is the color that we did this with, just to wet that canvas a little. I like to work wet on wet when I'm mixing colors. Um, so I'm gonna start with a little bit of that back on my canvas. And we're gonna work like down, straight down. We're not gonna work across. We're gonna work from the top of that acorn down, kind of following the curve of the acorn. And I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm just gonna add a little bit of umber and we'll, I'm gonna get it right up in there a little bit. And then just pull it down. And then we'll add some camel. I don't know what I'm doing guys, so don't judge me. might end up being a joke. It's like, OMG, look at this muddy mess. So let's just do some more camel. So this is why I'm practicing. I have to do an acorn for a customer and I'm going in the green. And I wasn't, I've never painted one before, so I was kind of worried about how it would look. So that's what we're doing here is we're practicing so I'll know what not to do. Oh, that looked pretty good. If, uh, when I start painting her acorn. Oh, I kind of like that green there. I'm gonna tone it down just a little. That looks pretty good there. That's a hot mess, but we'll get to it. It'll be all right. Gotta trust the process sometimes. And here's what's great about paint, and I tell people this all the time. It's just paint. You know, if you mess up, just stop what you're doing, let it dry. You can even hit it with a blow dryer and let it dry and then come back to it when, you know, when it's, uh, when it's dry and do, do it again. That's what's great about paint. You can't, can't really mess it up too much. It is what it is. I like that green so much, I'm gonna add some to this side. And we'll probably go over a little bit of that. This is a fresh acorn. <laughs> I'm gonna rinse my brush. And let's see, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back into my camel. <sighs> Michelle has a commission for an almond? That's kind of strange. An almond. Huh. I can't wait to see that. I'm going to come back with a little bit of this camel. Float a little bit of that in on both sides. Notice how I'm kind of following. I'm pulling my brush towards the center. Following the curve of that cute little acorn. Um, I'm gonna go, much to my chagrin, I'm gonna go into that rusted pipe again a little bit and come over here, tone that green down. And, all right, so. We're almond farmers, yeah! I, why didn't I think? What what am I what am I thinking? I'm still eating those almonds, Michelle. I actually had a handful of those almonds before I came upstairs. The chocolate covered ones are so stinking delicious. And uh, my sister, 
I uh, had to give her some of the almonds too because I was going to OD on them, so I did share with the fam. Uh, but they are stinking delicious. I'm gonna get a little dark brown, and I don't know if you can see my palette. I'm gonna move it over where you can see it a little. And just add in maybe a little dark brown here and there. Actually, I think I wanna add I'm just gonna keep going. I'll add whatever I feel like. Just tone some of this color, blend it together. All right, I wanna add some crazy color. That's why I brought the green and the red. So let's add the, the, uh, the well, I can't, I remember what this is. The acorn I saw <laughs> had red in it. So it was more of a bright orangey red, but I actually have, hang on, I have another orange color. So I think I'll do a little bit of it and then come over the top with this rusty red and maybe it'll make the right color. So I'm gonna get just a tiny bit of that because I don't know how that's gonna turn out. And we're gonna just add, oh yeah, look at that. I likey. All the fall colors, right? Can you see? It's kind of hard to see because it's uh, kind of far away, but let me add a little bit more. Mm. Now I'm going to dip into that red just a teeny tiny bit because I don't want to overwhelm. And I'm not sure it's going to be what I want, so I don't want to go too crazy. So I'm just going to probably need to let that dry a little. Yeah, I'm going to let that, that side dry a little and work on this side because it's starting to turn into a little mud ball. Mud ball. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to come back over here. I'm just gonna start back and forth, back and forth with my colors. So I'm gonna add a little back on top. I'm not 100% sure I like this, but we're gonna keep going. I think I'm gonna let this dry and kind of work on the tip top a little bit, and we'll see what happens. So up here, this is where all those little caps are, the little, the little just like dots and stuff. So I'm gonna just take um, the rusted pipe and I'm, oops, I did that wrong. I just stuck my brush in white. And I'm gonna ma just make some little swoops, oops. And then we'll add more color to those as well. So I'm just gonna make, I'm doing my brush like a, parent, like a, a comma or a C, a C, a C, just making some little C's in my acorn. I'm gonna do that all the way up, and then when I get to the top, we'll turn it the other way. So let's do right here. So can you see what I'm doing? So it's making that little circular, uh, I don't even know what, what you would call that, the little texture that the acorn cap has. It's gonna get there, eventually. <laughs> it may take a hot minute. So I'm just making C's with the rusted pipe color. And we'll come in and make C's with another color. What do you guys think so far? Am I gonna have to throw this away? <laughs> Don't think I haven't done that before. I've made, I call them dogs. If I make something that I really hate that really turned out bad, I'll just stick it in a closet somewhere because sometimes later you pull it out and you're going, hmm, I know what to do to this now. I know how to make it better. Um, and But those are what I call dogs. And I've got a couple dogs in the closet right now. Don't for a minute think I don't. All right, so 
There's the top. I'm just gonna mess with it a little bit more. I'm just gonna layer. So, uh, rinse all that off. And I think I'm gonna come back with some of this darker brown, the umber color. And I'm going to just kind of hit, again, just a little bit lighter touch on top of all of those again. And we'll just keep adding. We're gonna do maybe a little bit of green. Then we'll highlight the kind of in, a, in the other motion. Let's make sure that the ones along the edge have our, um, that dark on the bottom of them. So it kind of separates the head of the acorn from the cap. Is it called a cap? Somebody talk to me about acorns. Not 100% sure what it's called. I do know they're super cute painted. I had a friend paint them one time and then just put them all in a big jar. Super cute. Need more water on my brush. So, Let's see. Who in I'm trying to like just chitty chat while I talk because you know this is a process. Um, who in here, show of thumbs up, is a member of the Shattered Circle? I should have asked who is not, but show me thumbs up who is. We've been doing the commission acorn with modeling paste. No, I'm, it's just going to be painted as well, but that would have been a good idea too something to think about but you look at all you people woohoo you guys are so awesome um that's an idea though something to think about i don't know if i need the pressure of it <laughs> i'm already feeling the pressure just with paint all right so it's kind of getting there i think so let's see it is kind of starting to pop now, isn't it? It's starting to kind of come together. So I've got a little bit of green since we have some green in the bottom. I'm going to add a little bit of this darker green. It's called avocado. And I'm going to add a little bit of that avocado up here to the top too. Not everywhere, just a few spots, just kind of exactly like I was doing. So I'm just going to add in some bits here and there. I'm gonna go into the lighter green too. Might need some light. Might need to cover that back up. I don't know if I like that. Hang on. I'm adding a little bit of white to that dark green. It's a little too dark for me, and I want to tone it down just a little. I'm going to show this to you close up because it's so faint, you really can't see it from where you are, but I'll show it to you a little closer up in just a second after I finish messing it up. <laughs> I'm going to have to come back over some of these with some brown. Okay, so... I added a little bit too much, but that's okay. I'm going to come back over this uh, with the brown. Karen, you do immediately get an email. It's automatic. So it's probably stuck over in your junk folder. So go check there and search for an email from the Shattered Circle. So if you go in your search function and have it search all your boxes, you're probably going to find it in your junk. That's where, for some reason, the uh, email doesn't like us, and they throw our stuff in junk all the time. Brown again, so I'm just going to come back over and push some of that green back. Not much, just a little where it was kind of in your face. And I'm going to keep going. I'm not happy yet, so when you're not happy, you just keep going. 
I'm going to go into the camel, which is that that um, yellowy color, kind of a putty color. And let's see if that'll help. No, that's not it. Maybe a few spots. I think it's starting to get there. It's starting to get there. How's it look to you guys? Starting to feel a little better. Like, I feel like I know now what I don't want to do more than I know what I do want to do. And here's what, okay, here's what I need to keep in mind because I'm being overly anal about the head of this acorn, knowing full well, yeah, me either, Trish, uh, knowing full well, I'm going to cover it with glass. So I need to stop. I'm being crazy pants. So I'm going to be using this glass that we used on our sunflower. It's bronze reflective. I'm going to be using that on the top of the uh, cap. So I don't know why I'm going so crazy. I'm letting it go. I'm stopping right now. So what I'm going to do is rinse my brush. And I'm gonna take a tiny bit of this dark brown umber color on the very tip of my brush and I'm gonna offload back and forth. And what that does is blends the paint into your brush so you're not making a hard line. And then we're gonna come under the underside of the cap and just do a little bit of a shadow. So let me do that just to give it a little shadow It kind of makes it pop. We get a little bit more. A little bit more. Hang on. Yeah, I don't know why I was, I, I knew I was adding glass, so I don't know why I was being so, that ha, that's what happens sometimes. You just get in your head and you forget. So yes, let it go. Okay, so before we stop, I am gonna do one or two more things since this is dry. Uh, I think I'm gonna to try to add in some of that red. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna go into my brown a little. I'm gonna come over to the right side of my acorn and I'm gonna add some of that brown to the edge. And let's see. All right, I'm gonna rinse. I'm gonna do a little bit of white, and then I think we're gonna walk away. I'll show you this up close. And when we do the resin, the goal is, we're actually gotta do the stem too. But when we do the resin, the, the main goal is that it's gonna make these colors really pop and stand out. That's too much. And um, then you'll really be able to see what it looks like. I'm just gonna add a small bit of a little white mixed with camel there. And maybe just a little highlight. Okay, Woo. let's finish this up and then I think we're gonna add resin. So I'm gonna come back in and put another coat of the umber on the stem. This was kind of fun and it did, it did help me figure out what I do want to do and what I don't. One thing is not to even worry about what the cap looks like, obviously, because if I'd have been doing the larger piece and done all, and been so paranoid and done all that work and then remembered I was putting glass there, 
And that happens sometimes. I get carried away with painting because painting is my life <laughs> and, you know, making things pretty. And if I'd have done all that, I'd have been, I need to put a little posty note out on my canvas that says, uh, walk away from the acorn cap, sister. Crazy lady. Okay, so now I'm gonna offload my brush. I'm gonna get a little bit of white on the very tip of my brush, just the teeniest amount. And I am going to add a little bit at that top. And then I'm going to do it again, spread it out. And I'm going to add just a little, I'm gonna get this piece because my hand's gonna hang off. Just a little bit of white to this side and I'm not trying to be perfect or outline it perfectly. I just want to get some color over there to um, give it a highlight. I'm gonna add mm, one smidgy of black to the opposite side. I'm not even gonna put it on my plate. I'm gonna get it out right out of the cap. Who works like this? Do you work right out of the cap? <laughs> I'm, I'm notorious for that too if I only need a tiny bit. And I'm gonna go right along that edge with black. Ooh. So you have a little bit of a shadow and a little bit of, uh, I had black on my plate, big dummy. Look, shadow there. So it really stands out, makes it like three dimensional. So I'm gonna show this to you close up. Give me two quick seconds. Oh my goodness. Guys, I do love this. I don't really care for that, but that's okay. Because like I said, we're not even gonna see it. We're not even gonna see it. And I took all that time, it was like panicking and freaking out, adding color, and we're not even gonna see it. So look how cute this is. So you can see how on the stem, how adding that white to one side and the black to the other really makes that stem a little three-dimensional. I don't know if you can really see it well, but I'm gonna take a picture after we do the resin so that you can really see um, the color. Uh, it always helps when you do the resin. But before I do that, I'm gonna take a brush, a little bit bigger brush, and I'm gonna add some shadow right down here on, underneath my acorn because if something is sitting on a table, light's gonna hit it one way and I actually did it wrong. I should have had the white over here, dark over there, but don't tell anybody. I'll try to do it right the first, better the next time. But uh, it's leaning this way so it would be kind of creating a little bit of a shadow. So we're gonna do that. right along the edge. And you know what I think I'm gonna do too? I don't know if you guys watch, I don't know how, how many of you guys watch me consistently, but I my favorite thing to do is highlight things with an archive pen, which is just a really fine marker that you buy in the paint department. It's got the tiniest little tip. Now, a lot of artists will use black and a really thin liner pen to go around the outside of their pieces and add that little bit of lining and um, just lining everything out. Well, my arthritis doesn't really allow me to do that. So I'm, I like to use this because this I can control. A little tiny pen or a tiny uh, paintbrush with a tiny feathery tip makes me crazy. So here's what I like to do, is I'm gonna take my pen, and instead of using a paintbrush, I'm gonna do this. And I'm not gonna do the inside, because that's covered up. I'm only gonna do the outside edge, and I'll do a little bit here. I'm gonna do right around there. And I'm not like tracing every line. It's more of a, just a boom, boom. Just short, quick strokes. And that what that does is add just that little bit of detail to the outside that separates your background from your foreground. And I'm also gonna do it right here. So, there we go. Now we can do the good stuff. 
Okay, so let's do this. Since this is kind of a small area and I wanna make sure to keep my um, glass within this little area, and I'm gonna use glue as a bridge, okay? Or as a dam, really. It's gonna be my dam. So I'm gonna take my glue, and this is Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue. It dries clear, which is why I use it. And it's so cheap at Hobby Lobby. So I'm just going right up to the edge, not all the way over the edge, but right up to the edge with my glue. And that's gonna help keep my glass in place when I put it on my canvas so that it doesn't wanna just fall out everywhere. So let's see. So when I'm done with this, guys, I want you to hang out with me for five or 10 minutes. I'll answer any questions. If you're here from the Sunflower Group, I'll answer some questions. We are having a Q&A over there at 5.30. So if at all possible and you uh, can wait, you can save them for over there. And I want to answer any questions anybody has about the Sunflower or about the uh, Shattered Circle because we are open and ready for you over there. We're just sitting on go, waiting on you to come join us and play. Okay, so this is bronze reflective, and I'm about out of this, that actually may be out, because in my sunflower challenge, we used bronze and bronze reflective for our sunflowers, and I'm pretty sure I sold about 200 pounds of this stuff. So I'm gonna just add it to my acorn cap. I'm gonna take these big old pieces out. We don't need those. And I like dimension, so I kind of like to pile it up high. I don't like do one little uh, thin layer. So, but you you do you, if you like it, you know, thin, you do thin. I'm gonna do fats, so it matches my hiney. So I'm just gonna add Oh my goodness, guys. I can't wait to do the resin. You, gotta, you guys gotta stick around for that because you are gonna be shocked <laughs> at the difference it's gonna make when we resin in the colors and the way this glass looks. I promise you, promise. So I'm trying to like stay within the um, little curves of the acorn. It's not, it's not something fun I like to do micromanage where I place glass, but this is such a small piece that you kind of have to do that. So then I'm going to throw in a little more right on top. Let's see. This is going to be, I'm very happy that I practiced because I was stressing myself out so much. Guys, you have no idea. All I could think about all night last night was Am I gonna be able to paint an acorn? Am I gonna be able to get that color right? Am I, I do that to myself all the time, even though over in the sunflower group, I was telling you guys to trust the process. Trust the process and believe in yourself. So I'm guilty too, because I was freaking out because I knew I was gonna have to start this tomorrow. And I thought, well, we're gonna do a practice run, light the girls and boys in. I like, uh, somebody asked if I use the bigger pieces. I like to save these. Uh, I have a lot of bigger pieces too. And when I pull them out of my bag, when I'm using the smaller ones, I save them in like a separate container because almost always there's gonna be something you can use these for. I don't try to break them because it's tempered glass and it would be super hard to just break this, even though you probably could with your wheeled nippers. I just save them because one time when we're doing something, you're going to need that exact shape for, for something. So I, I kind of just save them. So I'm just going to add in some layers. Make sure it's sticking up and dimensional. And I, when we're done, I'll show you how deep it is, how much glass is on there. All right, I think we're done. That was just really a handful, guys. 
hardly any at all. So before we resin, I gotta do one little thing because I put my hand in something here. So I wanna take a brush and see if I, before I resin, if I can fix my little boo-boo that I made here. It's a 12 by 12. And it's gonna be, uh, have leaves on it too. So maybe I'll share some of that process with you guys. If, if I'm not too nervous. <laughs> All right, so I fixed that little boo-boo where I had put a little brown, I had some brown on my hand. And now I'm gonna do resin. I don't even think I need an ounce. So I'm gonna mix a half an ounce of resin. That's why I have these baby cups, guys, because a half an ounce of resin is nothing. I mean, it's literally hardly worth mixing. Um, well, I actually have uh, two pieces of art that need resin. So I think I will, what time is it? So I have time to pour those. Hang on guys, sorry. Yes, I have time. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix an ounce of resin and I'll tell you <laughs> exactly, or two ounces, and then I'll pour it in this cup. And I'll tell you when we're done, somebody remind me, I'll tell you exactly how much it took to resin this little baby cutie pants, okay? So I'm gonna put my gloves on. So guys, get over there and come play with us. Get, join the Shattered Circle. We are having so much fun. And this was September, just so you know. This was our September workshop. Look how cute Mr. Mr. Billy Goat Gruff is. So you can find him inside the workshop. Okay, so I use art resin. Yeah, I'll do that in just a second. I don't wanna bump my glass. I use art resin. It's a 50-50 resin mix. And um, it is non-VOC, non-hazmat, no BPA, made specifically for art pieces. So, and I've been using this for about five years and I would not use anything else. This canvas, uh, Miss Wanda, is a six by six. So I'm gonna mark my lines on here because you really cannot see them because of clear plastic. So I don't wanna mess up, so I am going to mark so that I don't overdo it or underdo it. Because that is how you fail with resin, is uh, messing up the measurements or messing up the uh, mixing process. So I'm gonna pour an ounce of resin in this cup. Once it gets close to the line, you wanna stop, let it grow, so, because it's kind of like molasses, you think you just have a little bit and suddenly it's covering your whole plate. It just kind of grows up to the line and so that's perfect. So I'm gonna set this piece aside or that cup aside. Then I'm gonna pour my hardener. Same bit, one ounce. I'm gonna pour it close to the line and then I'm gonna stop and let it grow. Woo, go Cindy. Whoa, whoa, slow your roll. So I wait a few seconds, see if it's gonna grow up to my line. I think I need just a smidge more and stop. Okay, let me put that away. So what I'm gonna do now, I have my hardener and my resin in two separate cups. And if you've never mixed resin before, I always say mix in two cups. Because if you try to mix in one cup and you over pour one part or the other, you are gonna be so, so sad because your resin will never dry if it's not measured properly. I'm gonna get a block. So now I'm gonna dump both parts in one cup. So I'm gonna push this up just a little for now. I cannot wait to see the colors with the resin on top. So I'm gonna dump this, whichever this was, either the hardener or the resin, I'm gonna scrape it out, make sure I get every little morsel, every little bit. 
You don't want to leave anything behind. Leave no resin behind. Is Rima still here? So I've emptied that cup. I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to do this one. So one part hardener, one part resin. Scrape them all out. It doesn't matter in what order you put them in your cup. You could do hardener, then resin, resin, then hardener. It doesn't really matter. Just don't do resin and resin. <laughs> no way, Keitha. Did you just mix wrong or what? Or measure wrong? I've done it. I've done it on a countertop, mind you. A Luckily, it was my son's countertop, and we were able to fix it. But yeah, the next day we came in and it was still wet because we didn't mix properly or we didn't measure properly. So we had to scrape it off. Luckily it was on the bar top, which was only like a foot deep and maybe four foot wide. And um, yeah, we did one or the other and we had to scrape it all off and start over. It was terrible. So. Connie, this project will be, uh, the video will stay here in Art Shattered, but all the colors I used and a tracer for the acorn will be in the Facebook page on the Shattered Circle. Anything that I do on Art Shattered, like a live, when I do a live, you get all the, you get the tracer and you get the, the list of colors added to the Facebook page on um, in the Shattered Circle Facebook page, and uh, the video stays here. So, Rima, are you here to time me or somebody? I'm looking at my clock, so if nobody can time me, I can. So for three minutes, we have to stir, okay? We're scraping the sides, and we're gonna stir, 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 and mix our resin. Now you don't want to whip it to death. You want to stir nice and slow because the faster you stir, the more bubbles you incorporate into your project and then it's just harder to get those bubbles out. I like to stir nice and slow in a room, uh, in a room temperature room because cold also makes it bubbly. Um, that way, if I have to use my heat gun or my torch, it's minimal. It's just boom, boom, boom. Okay, so stir, stir, stir. If anybody has any questions while I'm stirring for three minutes, I am happy to answer. Whether it's about this project, whether it's about Art Shattered, whether it's about the Shattered Circle, whatever you have. I am gonna just give you a little five minute briefing on what we do in the Shattered Circle. There is a lot of this <laughs> and a lot of really fun projects, contests, um, just uh, Q and A's, a group of the most wonderful human beings you have ever known there inside the Shattered Circle to help encourage and love on you on the daily because trust you me going through this move and separating from my husband if it hadn't been for those people in my group i don't know where i'd be right now because they literally helped hold me up yes resin will work on real acorns now what you'll probably need to do gretchen is um i don't know in what capacity you want to use them, but if you wanted to cover them with resin, I would say just uh, get some resin on your uh, gloved hand and rub it on the acorn and then put it on something plastic because uh, resin doesn't stick to plastic. But yeah, I'd love to know what you have in mind. Uh, Karen, it will be up in a few days. We are uh, waiting on um, Monday when we do the cutoff, and that's when it'll go on. So it'll be there ASAP, I promise. It is so pretty. Holy moly, gorgeous. Has it been three minutes yet, Reams? Oh gosh, it's been 10 minutes. <laughs> it feels like 10 minutes. 
like, I always say, stir in resin is like a plank. You think three minutes is nothing. You think three minutes is no amount of time until you're trying to plank. Try planking for three minutes. Yeah, most of you aren't gonna be able to do that. I know I couldn't. I actually, a couple years ago, had a contest with a bunch of friends and we all did a 30 day plank contest. Thanks, Rima. We all did a 30 day plank contest and I was the only one who finished the, at the end and I made, I did a five minute plank. But trust me, it dang near killed me. Okay. Uh, not really. You can, you can stir too fast, Rachel, but if you stir for four minutes, it'll be fine. If you just don't want to stir less than three minutes, yeah, it's always the longest. Uh, the resin, especially this small amount of resin, the resin is workable for probably 30 minutes or so. So yeah, if you're, if you stir 30 or 40 seconds over, it's no big deal. Okay, so I'm gonna do my glass first. So I'm just gonna use my little tool and I'm gonna drizzle over my glass. I'm gonna start on the left side and I like to do this methodically left to right or right to left so that I know I've done all the bits. Cause if you do it like this, if you're just going this way, you really, it's hard to keep up with how, um, what you've covered and what you haven't. So start on one end, work your way across. Trish, planking for about a minute and a half. Yeah, me, I don't know if I could do it a minute and a half right now, but a couple years ago, we, me and a couple of my friends did a 30 day plank challenge and you start off with like 30 seconds and you do that for a couple of days and over the course of three or yeah, 30 days, you build up to five minutes. And I did it, and I have video to prove it, and I've never done it again, and I've never even tried to do it again. It was super fun, and it was a good accomplishment, but yeah, I don't, I don't need that in my life today. <laughs> okay, so I've got all my glass covered, so now what I'm going to do is just drizzle a little bit of this resin on my flat parts, on the voids. And then look at the color pop. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to hold this up. I'm gonna use my little applicator to spread it to the edge. I wanna cover all that flat part. I love this applicator. This is a new toy introduced to me by one of my members and she gifted me with one and I liked it so much that I went out to Amazon and bought like a 12 pack in case this one falls apart. I never want to be without one. <laughs> so I'm just smearing it around. There are hardly any bubbles at all too. So that is a good thing, but I am going to hit it with the heat just because there's a lot of blank space. And I think I got everything. Let's see. All right, so let's see how much we use. So I mixed two ounces and I barely used a half an ounce. So a half an ounce would have been right. So if you're going, if you made four of these, it would only take maybe an ounce to do three or four. Yeah, I mean, I, I still have almost all of that resin. So I'm gonna pop my gloves off real quick. I didn't really get any resin on them, so I'm gonna try to take them off where I can, uh, I'm gonna have to do it this way. I'm gonna reuse those because I didn't touch the resin with them. So save on gloves when you can. So I'm gonna hit mine with a heat gun or a torch. So you could use a blow dryer on high heat, low resin, or I mean low resin, high heat, low air, or you could use a heat gun or a little creme brulee torch. You just don't wanna uh, focus in on one spot or let the fire from the torch touch your piece. All right, I see a little bit of debris. I'm gonna scooch this back towards me a little because I see they are a game changer. A little piece of fuzz. Let's see, a little piece of fuzz. No, that's not fuzz, that's paint. I don't see anything else. 
Oh my goodness, guys, I can't wait to show this to you. So I'm gonna put this close to the, look how cute. Oh my goodness, is that not adorable?